Supervision groups can be created by staff and allow easy sharing between the members of the group and the supervisor. In this screencast, we will look at how to set up a supervision group and how these help support the sharing of items in ePortfolio between the students and the supervisor. So we'll start by creating our supervision group. So from our drop down menu, we need to choose sharing. And on this panel on the left hand side, we select create share group. And we now have two options. One of these is to create a standard share group. And this works in a similar way to a distribution list. Or we have this option on the right to create our supervision group. And this is the one we want to do today. So we need to give the supervision group a name. This is the name of the group that will appear in your ePortfolio. So we've called the supervision group My Project Students. The group can have a different name in the students' ePortfolios by adding something into this Alt section. In this case, it would not make sense for the students to see a group called My Project Students. So we're going to put My Supervisor as the alternative title in the group. And then we select Add to add this as a supervision group. So now we need to add members into the group. Members can be added to the supervision group individually or by module code. So we need to go to this Manage Members tab along the top and use this search button here. So to add a whole module, we type the code into this box, do our search, and then we can choose the Add All button and this would add all 238 students into the supervision group. In this example, I'm going to add these five students into the group. So I just click the tick box at the side of their names, and that will add the students into the group. So now the students have been added, the group will appear in the front of our ePortfolio. So you go back out to the home page and use the supervision groups tab we can see the project students supervision group here. So how does this help with the sharing of items with the group? So I'm going to use the example of a blog post. I can share a blog post with a file attachment with my supervision group very easily. Using the drop down menu, I'm going to go to my blog. And I'm going to add a blog post using this graphic there. Okay, so I've put a title and some blog text in there, just the title's information, and it's uh, please read the attachment for our next meeting. And we can see underneath the share group area, we have the share group that says My Project Student. So this is our supervision group. So if I tick that box, I'm going to upload a file to go along with this. So let's choose our spreadsheet there, and we can now save this post. This post will be shared to the five students that are in the supervision group. Because I'm the supervisor, I'm able to share with all five of them with one blog post. Okay, and there we can see our, our blog post. Please read the attachment before our next meeting, and there's the attachment there. So I'm now logged in as one of the students in the supervision group. If we look at the supervision group and go to sharing, and go to my share groups and then supervision share group we can see here's the supervision group that we set up with my supervisor as the alternative title for the students when we click on this the student only sees the supervisor in the group the student doesn't see the other students so when the student comes to do a blog post and shares that with the my supervisor group it's only sharing with me as a supervisor. It's not being shared with the other students in the supervision group. There is ways that we can allow this collaboration to happen if we want to. So we can see under here, we've got items shared with by you in this group. And we can see shared by Graham Boxwell. There was a post, somebody was information. And if I now view this post, we can see there. Please read the attachment before our next meeting. So to demonstrate supervision groups once they've been used throughout the academic year. I've logged in as a lecturer in the business school called Fiona Thompson and 
she created the supervision group MKT 1004-5, and she's got 195 members in the supervision group. Now, if you want to lecture twice a week and ask the students to reflect on uh, the content of those lectures and to share those posts with her as the supervisor in the supervision group. And so when we click into the group and we then click on view group, we'll be able to see all the members and then the content as well. So we can see the group members appearing underneath. And as we scroll down, we can see here items shared with by you in this group. And we can see if we go down to the bottom, there's been 2,466 items shared with Fiona. So we've got about 247 pages of, of posts and content. Now Fiona can filter that down to individual users using this box here that says all users. So we can go and we can see what a particular student is posted. And these posts are now all done by this one student. And we can click view and view that blog post and we can comment on that blog post. So the supervision groups allow for other functionality as well. So when we click on the group in the home page, we can see we've got four options here. One is to view the group and that's what we've just done, viewing the group and seeing the content. If you have less than 15 people, you're able to create a meeting with the members of your supervision group and then you can untick any that you don't want to attend. We can create a community with the members of the group. What this does is it creates a collaborative space and enrolls all the students from the supervision group automatically into the community. And if a student or yourself posts into the community, that blog post will be visible by all other members of the community and can be commented on by other members of the community as well. And this last icon allows you to send an email to the members of the supervision group through ePortfolio. And so that's our screencast on creating a supervision group within ePortfolio.